By the end of the Subterra era, and beginning of the Mandoran period in galactic history, contemporary to the Second Great Schism in the Jedi Order, then still located on Osis, and the beginning of the Hundred Year Darkness, following the recusal of 11,933 BBY, stating Jedi independence from the Republic, and the subsequent Pious Dea Millennia. The planet of Korriban was ruled under a single king. Before the ascendance of Dothka Garoush, around 7,000 BBY, Korriban had been regionalized between competing rulers, all vying to reunify the planet under their own dynasty. Many of the Sith population on Korriban had begun to migrate to the nearby planet Ziost in the Estron sector, E4 on the usual map, using the Rakatan interstellar ship technology. The remaining populations of Sith on Korriban were largely reduced to feudalism and competition between the various regional self-proclaiming Sithari resulted in a simple two-class structure for the remaining populations to fall into. Dathka Garouche was from the warrior class, although had managed to also study Sith sorcery, the subject usually secret except to the opposite class, the various sects of wizards. Raush was able to reunify Korriban under a single ruler by replacing his natural biological heart organ with a melt massive type crystal imbued electromagnetically with the souls of the many thousands of dead Sith kings and warriors entombed in the valley of Gog near the Korriban equator, and particularly the other thirteen Sith sorcerers who had been most powerful since the reign of Sithari Adas. Grouch used this melt massive crystal heart to control an army of reanimated corpses, which he caused to become his loyal undead zombies using a Sith sorcery spell called the Tsaiwinoka Hayakut in Sith, or the reanimated dead in basic. These zombies remain neither dead nor alive, and bound to serve Grouch's crystal heart in the Valley of Gold for at least the next 7,000 years. Nevertheless, Graush himself, the first ruler of all the Korriban Sith since the Sithari King Adas, reigned only 50 years before being felled by assassins. At the beginning of Dathka Garush's reign on Korriban, it was already an environmental decline However, by the end of his reign, Korriban was almost devoid of foliage and, as it remains, a dust bowl ghost planet, making Zeost, then undergoing an ice age, still more preferable to the remaining Sith on other worlds than repopulating Korriban. Following the reign of Dathka Grush, Global culture he left behind remained little changed from the strict two-class feudalism it had degenerated into before. Aside from having succeeded in achieving unified global government under a single dynast. Thus, during this time, contemporary to the earliest years of the Hundred Years' Darkness, around the same time as the Second Great Schism among the Jedi on Osis, the Sith Sorcerer class began to evolve, while the Sith Warrior class began to devolve. For two generations following Dathka Garush's death, the Warrior class of Sith Masasai was reduced using Sith Sorcery to more savage and degenerate animalistic forms of beings, while the Sorcerers themselves consolidated power to their own class by pledging their control of the Masasi to the global Dark Lord of Korriban. For three total generations, the Garouche dynasty prevailed. Following his murder, a direct heir presumptive, whose name history has since forgotten, assumed his global imperial throne. 
As is often the case with studying them, it appears the name of this heir to the title of Dark Lord of the Sith is unknown due to his having been killed and all records of his reign erased by his successor, who in this case was also presumably his own son. It was during the reign of this third generation of the Graush dynasty on Korriban that the Dark Jedi discovered the planet Korriban. Although they had achieved a global level of government, the feudal Sith on Korriban were largely isolated from their fellow Sith on neighboring Zeost. Thinned out by aeons of civil war, the populations of Korriban Sith were also partially devolved Masasi warriors, and their dwindling class of magician priests grown subservient to the global dynasty. It was because of their low degree of social preservation, their generally atrophied sense of duty to preserve and learn from history, that the feudal Sith on Korriban, both the retarded Masasi warriors and the Sith sorcerer cultists alike, bowed before the arrival of the aliens and hailed them as gods. Considering their entire history's long veneration of the trait of superhuman strength supposedly embodied in the Sithari king Adas, who repelled alien invaders, it is actually more ironic than one might at first suspect that the Korriban Sith would welcome new alien invaders as gods. However far removed their moral sense was, the Sith's appetite for dominance was, in this event, easily twisted in their minds by the fallen Dark Jedi. The name of the second Grouge dynast has been lost, as of now, to these records of history. The name of Dathka Grouge's presumable grandson, the global Dark Lord of the Korriban Sith, who ruled the planet's three-tiered feudal class system at the time the Dark Jedi arrived on Korriban, was Hakagram Grouch. His legacy as a tyrant was minuscule, mainly consisting in collecting the tithes of loyalty. He was beheaded on the spot by the Dark Jedi, Ajunta Pal, and with that came an end to the rule of Korriban by a solely Sith lineage. Thus the second Dark Lord of the Sith, following the short-lived dynasty of Dathka Grosh, was not of the Sith species. Ajunta Pal was a near-humanoid, former Jedi Master, who had been expelled from the Order for experimenting with alchemy and learning how to create and shape life mentally on a subcellular level. He and his followers had, at the time of the Second Great Schism, divided from and gone to war against the Jedi on Osis, a conflict remembered by historians as the Hundred Year Darkness. Following a final defeat on the planet Corbos, the Jedi exiled Paul and his dissident group. History records that Paul was initially rejected as a god by the global king of Korriban, Hagakam. Grosh, grandson of the first Dark Lord of the Sith, who had a bit more sense than the rest of his people, at least. Nevertheless, Paul prevailed against King Grosh's second-in-command, the Sithari's so-called Shadow Hand, to betray his loyalty to his Sith King. In the end, Paul slaughtered Grosh on his own sword, and ascended as the Genarii, or Dark Lord, of all of the Sith on Korriban, as well as Zyost. The ineffectual leadership of the Grouge dynasty was carried on under the original Sith Empire, with Pal largely focused away from administrative organization. The other fallen Jedi having all been declared equal Dark Lords of the Sith it was only a short time until Paul was replaced by a successor. Darth Endendu was a student of the alchemical work of Paul's fellow fallen Jedi and Sith Dark Lord, Karnas Mur, 
who had learned Moore's secret of transposing his willpower, memories, and thoughts onto a non-living object, the Murr talisman. Darth Endadu was a humanoid male from the planet Prakrith in the deep core who had journeyed to Korriban either with or shortly after the first dark Jedi to settle there. He was younger than Mirror, Paul, Draipa, and the other Sith Lords, and had worked a long time in secret on perfecting Murr's transference method by combining it with the form of the midichlorian manipulation method of Paul to extend and prolong his own life indefinitely. Following his inevitable descent from the other Sith Dark Lords of the time, he fled back to his homeworld Prakrith and subjugated his fellow humanoids there into a global cult, worshipping him as their god, called the Malevolence. This cult persisted there, worshipping him, until they and he were finally killed by Darth Weirlock in 137 ABY, making him, at his death, around the age of 7,000 years old.